you know, I want to get out. And of course he did, he got to Fallujah. And that was at the height of uh, the conflict there, war. I was the first person from the agency to go to Fallujah. It's pretty overwhelming. I mean, all these things that you see on TV are now seen with your own eyes. He told us later there were so many things that he didn't tell either of us that he was experiencing. I mean, there are terrible things that are happening there and that human beings are doing to each other. I told Kirk, I said, what if we all fly down to the Dominican for Christmas and spend Christmas together as a family? And so, you know, I had spent the previous 72 straight hours in and out of helicopters and charter flights to get out of Iraq and then across the world to, to go to the Dominican Republic. So I, when you factor that in and, and, the, um, and the stress that I had and all of that, I think that's what sort of led to that, to that storm happening in my mind. The first night that I arrived in the Dominican Republic, I was exhausted. It's just a hellish process getting out of Iraq. I was tired, but I was happy to see all my family members, so I stayed up maybe till like around midnight or so and then went to sleep. The next thing I remember is that I'm standing in front of this window in my room looked out the window and I saw this unfinished building and I thought that I was back in Fallujah. I looked down and realized I wasn't wearing any body armor and so I thought that it was stupid to be walking in front of a window and giving a sniper a profile. And so I yelled out and I quickly crouched below the window. For whatever reason, I woke up and my brain stored that memory. The second night, I never woke up. Kirk was sleepwalking. He thought he was back in Iraq. He opened the sliding window, but it was on the second floor, and it had no patio. He opened the window, and then he walked right out. It was like 4.30 in the morning. The guard at the hotel he was patrolling the resort and saw me sitting perched on the windowsill, sort of staring out. He pointed his flashlight up at me and was yelling at me to get back inside, and then he heard this big crash. I had fallen something like 17 feet and hit concrete, and I was basically lying in my own blood. It's as though like a movie is fading in and the volume is slowly turning up. And I saw my family members beside themselves, crying, screaming, they're all yelling, asking me what happened. And I don't know what the problem is. I don't feel the pain yet. And I look at them, and I mean, it. All I can say is I, I, I was absolutely certain he had been shot through the head. I mean, that's what it looked like. I had just spent a whole year of my life absorbing a lot of stress in a pretty dangerous environment. And now I sleepwalked out a window and nearly died. I basically came to this belief that I had just wholly and utterly failed, that the whole experience of Iraq, everything that had brought me to that point to get to that opportunity in Fallujah to actually do something good, nothing seemed to be worth it. And suddenly to feel like I might be useful again, I was not focusing on my own worries anymore once the Iraqis started writing. Pieces that you've written and about you, there's a description, especially during the time of your accident, that you've been suffering from PTSD. I think that I was suffering from symptoms of PTSD, which may sound like it's splitting hair, but uh, to be sure, when I came back from Iraq, it was several months before I had a night's sleep that 
was free of nightmares and, and this accident itself I think was uh, fairly indicative of a high stress level from a... Uh, How are you doing now? Oh, I'm fine now. Got some scars on the face and some broken teeth, but I can live with that. Do you regret your service there? No, no. Uh, it's the most, the most challenging and probably least rewarding thing I've ever done. Um, but I don't really know what the, the point of living is if you don't put those challenges in front of you.